Heavenly Father, please bless us as we hear the good news of your word, which sets us free through faith in Jesus. In his name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Well, it's Reformation Day. We're wearing red. And like last Sunday, I thought I'd start us off with a little bit of humor. Is that okay? I'm becoming a little predictable, aren't I? All right. It's always fun to make fun of ourselves a little bit as Lutherans in the way we do things. I uh, saw this online, and it's a picture of Luther, and he said, I don't always nail things to church doors, but when I do, stuff starts to happen. There's a preacher behind a pulpit, you know, he's got his arms out like this. I do that sometimes too, and this guy's actually bald, bald too in this common strip, and he says, uh, there seems to be something wrong with this sound system, to which the people in the pews reply, and also with you. I see some of you nodding your heads out there. No, the church door was fine. I'm just fixing your theology. Is How about this? This is a, your mama's so Lutheran, all of her casserole dishes have her name taped to the bottom. <laughs> People still do that? Do we still do that? Okay. <laughs> That's too funny, isn't it? Coffee first reach Europe in the year. 1515, Martin Luther sparked the Reformation in 1517. Beware of a caffeinated pastor. <laughs> you know you're a Lutheran when the pastor skips the last hymn to make sure the church lasts exactly 60 minutes. <laughs> and how about this from a Lutheran church sign? The seven last words of a Lutheran. We never did it that way before. Yeah, we laugh at ourselves, don't we? Isn't that because when we do it different, you know what is it? How many lights? Uh, how many Lutherans does it take to change a light bulb? Change? Happy Reformation Day, everybody! You know that's probably what the Church of Luther's Day was probably saying to him when he wanted them to make some changes, when he wanted them to reform what they were doing and just simply get back to the basics of the Bible. I can just see the church of his day saying, we've never heard it said that way before. You know, that by grace through faith in Jesus, all your sins are forgiven and you have a place reserved for you in heaven. I mean, as we know of in the 1992 movie, A Few Good Men, the church of Luther's day couldn't handle the truth. The truth that you're saved by grace through faith in Jesus, apart from your own efforts, not of good works, so that no one can boast or take credit for it. But the church of this day, they wanted nothing to do with the truth, the truth of the gospel. It was two Wednesdays ago when, uh, I think I shared during the children's message last week, the pastor appreciation cards that we, Deacon Steve and I received from the NBCS, families and school kids. Man, that was a lot of fun. And, you know, after we had that time together, Miss um, Blaga, you know, said to me, when we're standing right there in front, hey, Pastor, can you tell all of us today, what is your definition of the gospel? On the spot. How about that? I'm like, hmm, that's a good question to ask a Lutheran. And I probably gave a long-winded answer. You know what it was? It was, well, first of all, the gospel means good news. And we believe that good news that Jesus Christ, who is both true God and true man, died for the sins of the whole world and rose again from the dead. And if you have faith in him, your sins are forgiven and you have a place in heaven. Well, I probably lost the kids about halfway through that. But amen to that. That, that is the gospel. And I could have said it like this now. And the reason I bring this up is because Somebody might ask you, hey, you're a Christian, right? And you'll say, yes, I am. You go to church? And you'll say, yes, I do. And I'll say, where do you go to church? And you'll say, first good shepherd. Hey, can I ask you a question? What's the gospel? Yeah, what are you going to say to that? It's, it's the good news that through faith in Jesus Christ, my sins are forgiven. And that's it, guys. Isn't it that simple, that basic? 
And that fundamental, I mean, we say, please rise for the reading of the gospel. I hope you know that the gospel means good news. What's the good news? That Jesus died for your sins and through faith in him, your sins are forgiven. Isn't that great? It's John 3, 16. God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And it was Luther who was so obsessed with his sin. He wasn't obsessed with sinning. He was obsessed with the fact that he felt so bad because he couldn't stop sinning. And he fasted and he did all kinds of things to make himself right with God. And he became a monk. And maybe you know the story of his conversion. It was, was a heavy, he was involved in a heavy rain. His dad wanted him to be an attorney, so he was in law school. And he didn't think he was going to make it in this thunderstorm. And he cried out to one of the saints, If you save me, I will become a monk. Dang, he got saved. The storm didn't take his life, and he goes into the monastery. I mean, he was probably the best monk that ever lived. I mean, all the rituals and all the devotions and saying all the Our Fathers. And he, I mean, he worked it because he wanted to have a right relationship with God, and he wanted to know the mercy, the grace, the forgiveness, and the love of God. But he couldn't find that in God. All he found was wrath and condemnation and judgment and punishment and anger because of his sin problems. But finally, reading probably Romans chapter 1, and he, he saw there where it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for the salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it, listen to these words, the righteousness of God, not his righteousness, but the, the rightness or righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, as it is written, classic words here, the righteous shall live by faith. And it's like the scales fell off his eyes. You know, he had a huge conversion. He's like, I now see a gracious God, a merciful God, a loving God, a forgiving God. I'm just, I'm made right with God. I've been clothed with the righteousness of Christ. And now I see God as a, a loving God, a merciful God, a gracious God, a compassionate God, a forgiving God. Because the righteous will live, say it with me, by faith. And that faith gets lived out in good works, in loving God, and in loving neighbors. There we forget Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. And I add this, not because they make us right or save us, amen? Which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So look, if you believe in Jesus that through faith in him you're saved, and you're not about good works, you're not about loving God and loving neighbor, well, then maybe you really don't believe. And you don't have to keep track of your good works either because even faith is worked by God, the Holy Spirit. He uses the law to show us our sin, and he uses the gospel to show us our Savior. So you don't have to keep track of your good works. If you're a believer in Jesus, if you understand what he's really done for you, that your trespasses, your iniquities, and your sins are not held against you, that you're not going to be spending eternity in hell, well, then you can't help but be excited and do good things for God and for fellow human beings. Amen? They just come naturally to you. I mean, they just flow right through you. Why? Because you have the Holy Spirit. And if you have the Holy Spirit, you have Jesus. And if you have Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit. Because you cannot say Jesus is Lord unless you have the Holy Spirit. This is a really important teaching, you guys. I mean, Luther called it the most important teaching of all. And I mean, if we get this wrong, it impacts all the other doctrines or other teachings of the church. It's kind of like, you know, a wheel cover. You know, back in the day, they had wheel covers on cars, you know, like good old Oldsmobile Delta 88s. You had the hub, you know, the wheel cover with that old rocket thing in the middle, and then all the spokes that go out. Well, the hub of the wheel cap is the fact that the chief article of the church, the chief teaching of the church is we're saved by grace through faith in Jesus. And that impacts all the other articles and doctrines of the church. I mean, if you get that wrong, that negatively impacts all the others. Because a lot of Christians out there are still saying it's faith plus good works equals salvation. It still depends on me. I still have to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Yes, Jesus died on the cross for my sins. He rose again from the dead. But there's still something I got to do to make myself right with God. And Luther would shake his head and say, no, there's nothing you can do. Jesus did it all for you. You're a poor, miserable sinner, as we like to confess. Your sins are forgiven but you are just. That is, you are made right with God through faith. And a lot of Christians, and there's millions of them, are still getting it wrong. Because if you were to ask them, what's your definition of the gospel? Well, it's being a good person. It's living a good life. 
It's being moral. It's helping out my neighbor in giving money to charities and to the church. They get it wrong, folks. They're pointing to themselves instead of the one who has done all those things perfectly for them, Jesus Christ. And of course, I'll end with a story that most of you have probably heard, but I see some fresh faces out there today. You probably haven't heard it. It's really came home for me. It's come home for me a number of times in my 32 years of ministry how people still think that when they die, that it's their good life that's somehow going to determine whether or not they make it to heaven. Casino executive Drew Don Darrow, vice president of operations of the D. Casino, you guys know the D down here? I think you do. Uh, you know, the Golden Gate and the Circa owned by Derek Stevens. Well, this was a frat brother of Derek's at the University of Michigan. So they're tight. They're friends. Well, all of a sudden, Drew just at like 56, 57 years old, keels over and dies of a heart attack and checks out. That's why you always want to have the passport of faith because you never know when it's going to happen. Amen? Always want to have the passport of faith in Jesus not in yourself. Well, he was Roman Catholic, and so his, his widow went to the, the Catholic priest where they're members of, you know, pretty close to the downtown area here, and asked if uh, they could, he could hold the service and if they could actually do it at the D. That way a lot of his buddies and friends could come to the D and drink Pap's Blue Ribbon because that was his favorite beer, red, white, and blue. First funeral I've attended where people were drinking beer. And by the way, they weren't inebriated. They were just doing it in memory of him. Okay? Nobody was out of control. Well, the, 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 the priest said, hey, I'll do the service if it's in the church. But if it's not in the church, not doing the service. Well, the widow knew a member of FGS and said, look, if your priest doesn't do the service, I might know somebody who will. I'm, I'm just crazy enough to do something like that. You know, take the gospel to a casino and share the good news of Jesus and see how the Holy Spirit's going to mess with that and with people's minds and hearts as they're drinking PBR. Well, I sat down with the widow in my office and we're talking about the service. She said, you know, after you do your thing and after you say your thing, then Derek, I want you to introduce Derek Stevens and he's going to come up and say his thing. And I said, well, here's my thing. Here's what I'm going to say. This is what I've just said to you guys today, that you're saved by grace through faith in Jesus. As we heard in Romans 3, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and we all need help, and we all need support. We're all broken, and we need a Savior from our sin because the name of Jesus means he saves. He saved us from the big three, sin, death, and the devil. And, and I said to her, that's what we believe, that if you believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior, your sins are forgiven, and you have a right relationship with God. And she went, oh, a huge sigh of relief. And look, I usually don't say something in response when somebody giggles or laughs or sighs or whatever, but I just said, that was quite noticeable. Can you tell me more about that? And she said to me, I've never heard it put that way before. Isn't that amazing? Still living with the good works thing. You know, I, I don't know when I take my last breath and close my eyes if I'm really going to be in heaven or if I'm going to be in some other place that the church is telling me about that really doesn't exist. And that's what Luther was sick and tired of in his day too. He saw too many of his brothers and sisters in Christ taking their last breath and checking out, not knowing whether or not they'd be in heaven. And when you go to those kind of funeral services today, they're still praying that please have mercy on his soul. Please have mercy on, we hope that they've been a good enough person to somehow earn your favor and divine grace and mercy and we'll be allowed into the heavenly mansions prepared for them. We don't pray like that. We say, thank you, Jesus, that this person was a grateful believer in Jesus that trusted in you, that knew that their sins were forgiven, that would clothe the righteousness of Christ in holy baptism, who received the body and blood of Christ and the forgiveness of sins, who had faith. Not in themselves, but in the good and perfect work of Jesus Christ. And we thank you and we praise you that that person is with you in heaven today. Amen. Do you see the difference? Let's celebrate on this Reformation Day what God did through Martin Luther and what he continues to do through each one of us in the church. And finally, you know you're a Lutheran when you greet a visitor with welcome. Welcome. You're sitting in my seat. <laughs> and all God's people said.